Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Duckfield here. I've got a Protoss vs Terran for you to uh, check out today. Or you're having a break from school or work or maybe just having the day off or maybe you shouldn't be watching and you are at school or work and appreciate it that you, you know, I, I can uh, entertain you while you should be doing something else, but it's all good. We've got our Protoss player up at the top right hand side of Frost here playing for the XMG crew. It is of course Todd. And Todd has uh, been around for quite a while, of course, back through the Wings of Liberty days as well. Has uh, recently done a little bit more casting, and I, I do really like his, uh, his... He sort of adds in that analysis, the sort of the pro player side of the casting, whether it be with Apollo or uh, or some Kylaris action going on, normally with the ESL slash IM kind of productions as well. You'll see him casting those sorts of things. Still does a little bit of laddering, of course. He's up in the Grandmasters on the EU server, so no slouch at the game at all. Still continuing on with that kind of play as well. His opponent down at the bottom left, uh, bottom right hand side, I should say, as our blue Terran player, has also been around for quite a while and has also made quite a name for himself. From ESC, it is Goody. So for those of you who uh, may not recognize this name, I, well, I'm sure there's probably only a couple of you that may not recognize who Goody is. He's one of the few, uh, the very few, wandering the lands who will do mech in almost every single matchup. Generally, uh, pretty much in everything. If there was a small period uh, last, I think it was last year, I can't remember. Goody fans, let me know. I can't remember when it was. But he stopped doing it in TVP just purely because it was really, really difficult to do uh, to do Mech versus Protoss, and some will say this guy is a little bit crazy because he still does it from time to time. But as I've mentioned in uh, in many of uh, the previous sorts of Mech versus Protoss vods that I've done, um, it's not impossible. It's just extremely difficult to do Mech versus Protoss, namely because there are so many ways that a Protoss can deal with it. So we'll get to see. I'm assuming uh, I, I'm uh, assuming the goodies going to Mech. Like I, I, I just sort of put it out there as a bit of a fact right now because uh, it is generally what he is uh, quite good with. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see how Todd is going to deal with this. A lot of the time when a, t when a Protoss player comes up against a Terran that they are aware of that uh, will do a little bit of mech, then they'll just try and metagame a little bit, building a couple of quick robos right at the start and just cranking out some immortals, perhaps going straight down the Templar tech path and getting those Archons available early, perhaps even going up to Stargate and just trying to take advantage of Void Rays and uh, going up towards uh, the end game, which generally with mech is going... Uh, against mech, sorry, is going to look towards the carrier tech. So it's a bit it's a bit of a mix. You want carriers and tempest as your general endgame composition, along with a few Templar as well, up against mech, because if you don't if you with as we were saying, it's very hard to do mech, but there are ways to do it. And high quality Terran players will be able to leverage the particular style to their advantage. A lot of the time what you will see if a uh, if a Protoss is going heavily into Immortals and Archons and things like that, you'll see the Protoss, uh, sorry, the Terran player go towards the Ghost Tech, get some EMPs across the field, and then those Immortals and, Ar and Archons are basically useless. So, uh, you know, there, there are things you have to be careful of. It's not the immediate pushover all the time that you will see, uh, you know, being posted on Team Liquid or on Reddit or something like that, where, you know, sort of the, the lower tier Protoss players will just say, just build Immortals, they'll win you the game. Because against a good, a good mecha, they won't. They won't. Um, but uh, we'll have to see. Goody just scouting around right now, just confirming what's going on. We'll see that there is a very basic gateway expansion from his opponent. We've got a forge also down the back as well. It looks like Todd is going to try and delve into those upgrades as quickly as he can. But for Goody, lots of marines coming out at the start. You may think, whoa, he's getting lots of marines. You, he may not be going mech duck, Phil. Just calm down a second there, buddy. Put your seatbelt back on. Well, this is a, just a very standard opening. There's no... There's no real way, like, you can do some slightly wackier things that don't involve all these marines at the start, but most of the time you're going to have to get some of these marines right here. They are needed against oracles, they're needed against uh, possible, uh, you know, some possible early attacks that might come through. So what you will n normally see, even out of mech players, is quite a lot of marines right at the start. So Goody is just doing everything as you would normally expect. His Reaper is still available to scout inside the main. A couple of Stalkers will be here to try and shoot this guy down. I think the Goody should be able to get out though. 
takes a few too many shots there. One more stalker shot and that Reaper is dead. It looks like it just escapes for now. Gets out of the uh, clutches of death for the time being. Uh, we do have a couple of extra gates being thrown down. Cannon inside the main. Plus one to weapons coming out. And this is a like this is what I would expect to have from a Protoss player who, ex who who is expecting mech. And you may be wondering why do you want to get plus two plus one to weapons instead of armor or something like that. The reason we get armor in uh, in PVT generally when you're playing against bio, you want to be stopping these marines from doing their high uh, like the high paced damage that they do. They shoot very fast. They have a small amount of damage, but it comes out very fast, right? So what you want is you want to have your armor blocking those shots. Whereas when you're dealing with mech, you're going to be dealing with tanks that will hit you very hard. Not necessarily very fast, but very hard. And what you want to do instead is just try and kill them as quickly as possible. So this is why generally when facing up against a predicted mech player, you do kind of want to get those, um, those weapons upgrades out first instead of armor. Now, another weird kind of, uh, I guess, correlation to this is that a, a Terran player who also, who goes mech is a little bit like playing against a Protoss player. It's very expensive kind of play and composition. It's also very slow composition, but also it's one that is very powerful. So it's a lot like playing against a Protoss. So, and you would do the similar thing in PvP. If you're playing PvP, you get up, you get arm, uh, weapons upgrades first. You skip armor for a little bit, you skip shields for a little bit. You don't need that stuff um, just because of the benefits that come from having the weapons upgrades, which we'll see in a moment here as it is about to finish up for Tom. There you go, 55 damage with those phase disruptors from the Immortals against things like the tanks and uh, other various armored units that'll be coming out. So this is uh, just normal standard sort of stuff here from both players. Goody pushing across to make sure he can threaten his opponent and force out the photon overcharge so that uh, Todd does not have that full energy available. We do have a Banshee's Cloak and uh, of course a few more mech units on the way. We'll probably see, now that Goody has uh, gotten his third command center up, we'll probably see the next few factories go down in just a moment so that he can prepare for the, uh, the large amount of production that he is going to need very soon. So Goody is also adding in his armory, making sure that those, uh, double armory, sorry, to make sure that those upgrades can come out for the vehicle and ship units very quickly. Todd, looking to try and get some harassment on, has got an Archon and a couple of Zealots inside a warp prison that is going to head down the right-hand side of the map, looking to try and find a way in there. In fact, both these players are going to have uh, their interesting uh, little harassment units for just poking past each other. I believe Goody did see that, so he should be, yeah, he's going to move these uh, these Marines into position here while attacking with his Banshee. So, of course, both players should be pretty well protected against the incoming harassment that they are looking to do. So, a turret finishes here for Goody, so that's that should be enough to deflect this War Prism. I doubt that Todd will want to try and push into that. Meanwhile, we can see that uh, Goody may be looking to pick up a third expansion somewhere, a little bit of a ninja expansion across to the side of the map perhaps, that could be on the play card for him. But he is now starting to add in those extra factories. So we've got two factories on the reactors, we've got one with a tech lab just bringing out the tanks, the other two will bring out uh, the Hellions, possibly Widow Mines, but I really see Goody play a Widow Mine centric kind of mech. There's a couple of ways that you can play mech. Uh, that people sometimes forget about is that you can play uh, a little bit more of an air centric style You can play for a much more tank centric style like Liquid C used to do when he was playing SC2 for a little bit You can also do um, Widowmine based style which uh, I believe Villo has been trying lately and uh, Hungarian Protoss, uh, sorry Terran player Breach has been using a little bit though I'm not sure how much he plays these days. I haven't seen him streaming for quite a while now uh, but, as we can see, Goody moving down towards his third base is also setting this one up down in the bottom left hand side, interestingly right next to the pylon that has been placed here by Todd. Todd really looking to set up these, uh, just a, a lot of map vision, a lot of presence to be able to warp in units and uh, keep an eye on what his opponent is up to. But he knows that there is mech, and thus he knows that he is able to really get a lot of these immortals coming out. We've got three on the field already, a fourth one is just about to be added in, and Archons are going to be available as well. So, four... Uh, Todd at this at this stage, he's doing a pre, a, quite a good job of uh, just taking advantage of things that you need to do to get ahead of mech. You need to take expansions quite quickly, you need to be cranking out these upgrades as fast as possible. I would like to see a second forge, I'm a little bit surprised that he hasn't gotten a second forge, but uh, uh, getting the upgrades out is really, really important. You just can't let 
a, uh, a Terran get ahead at any stage when it comes to upgrades because these units will smash you down and especially if uh, Goody gets some of those ghosts out of the field that we were talking about earlier then it can become a little bit messy. But one thing which uh, I would like to point out, this is actually a little bit different to what you normally see. As uh, Azella just pokes into Goody's third base, takes out a tank, a couple of SCVs might go down, but you just turn around and punch that Zealot in the face, so I guess that works too. As <laughs> as there was a tank up on the high ground to protect it. But one, one quick thing before we get to uh, a little bit more harassment here that I'd like to point out is the three star ports. This is a little bit different to what you normally see from mech players. They will normally just have uh, the, you know, five quick factories to get every Everything out of the ground that they need. But uh, well, before we go on about that, there is quite a large battle going on here. Immortals coming up, and Mothership will get into the division, but there are a couple of Banshees here, and the Quark is going to be able to help them get into this fight. There is no Observer here, and Todd pushing forwards a little bit too far, perhaps, not really uh, expecting the amount of small arms fire that is coming out from Goody here with lots of these Marines, and then of course the Hellions there as well, which do a great amount of damage. But Todd was able to sneak his War Prism inside the main base. Lots of Zealots are here, there is an Archon warping in, can still look to warp in some more units as well, and I would expect that is what he is going to do, but Goody comes in with some of these Blue Flame Hellions and Hellbats, is looking to clean up this inside the main, where is the Viking to try and fend off this, uh, this warp prism, because he needs to get that out of there, and uh, actually away it goes. Todd is, uh, gets a decent amount of damage, it's not too bad at all as he looks again to try and push in towards his third base, not really recognizing that there is an extra base down on the bottom left hand side. But Todd is going to push forward, this could be a little bit of a dangerous angle, when he moves in here he could get surrounded, but we'll see what happens as he now pushes forward, the Hellbats are going to come across to the side, you kind of expect Woody to run across this way and try and capture those units inside his grasp, but uh, looks as if Todd is going to be walking back again. This, this interesting addition of all of these Hellbats and uh, and the Hellions is, is providing a lot of small arms fire. Now, we call it just a small arms because the Immortals don't, they don't trigger their heart and shield when they're attacked by uh, by Hellions. So it means that they, they will take a lot of damage a lot quicker here, which is providing Goody with a way to deflect these, uh, I suppose, these beefy kind of units that, that normally will just soak up tank fire and Thor fire and stuff like that. So. Todd is on the retreat right now, as I get a message in my phone. Uh, has a few immortals left over, but a couple of them will be dying off now. Todd continuing to fall back while Goody is on the approach. More Hellions and Hellbats on the way. The Banshees are providing some shots from the air with their, uh, what are they called? The, they have a cool name. Backlash Rockets, that's the one. I was thinking of something with Lash in it, but I couldn't remember what it was. But uh, as you can see, Goody now pushing forwards, looking to establish a position here. This is a really good spot, but uh, only has a few tanks. If he's able to set up a few more tanks here, then he could put himself in a good spot. Needs to be careful. There are a few Phoenix out in the air as well, looking to get some lifting going on here. Here's Todd now coming through. Where are the Phoenix? Lift up the tanks and then get in there. Looks like the Immortals are going to come from the side and are going to get a lot of damage done anyway. More Phoenix coming through. War Prism is here. Going to drop in a few Zealots at the front, trying to soak up the damage of the Marines and the Hellbats, but Goody is still smashing through these units. All of those uh, those Marines that are still out on the map right now are just uh, doing a wonderful job of tearing apart those Immortals. And now dropping in a few Mana Mules here is Goody. He is uh, having a little bit of trouble with a few Zealots just on his side of the map, but will be able to clean that up and is harassing his opponent, taking down his third while Goody has still established a fourth down on the bottom left-hand side of the map has now cleared out Todd's third. The Phoenix looking to get some damage done. They are able to take down a few of the units here. I kind of feel like maybe Goody should just back up or at least contain off to the side here. This may be a little bit too much to push into. I don't think Todd's going to die. This is a very clumped up area, but uh, he will come out. He's finally going to lift up one of the tanks, maybe able to lift up a couple of the others while the Archons and Zealots clean up the rest of the forces on the ground. And yeah, just perhaps a little bit too far forward there. Just overextending a little bit is goody. I feel like, yeah, just moving back would have been a, a bit of a nicer idea here. Wait for the reinforcements to come together and help out in pushing that position. But I mean, he's in a wonderful spot now regardless. Todd sitting at 85 supply. Having these Phoenix out is quite nice, but the problem now is that the Vikings are out. And we do have a couple of Thors as well. 2-2 two, two on the upgrades of these mech units here for goody. Meanwhile, on Todd's side of the map, just plus three on the weapons. No armor, no shields, no air upgrades as far as I can tell as well. Yeah, no air upgrades or anything like that. So the Phoenix are going to be doing a limited amount of damage. Especially when considering that they're dealing with a lot of Vikings and the Thors. So 
uh, it's going to be difficult for Todd to try and uh, get back into this one. Unfortunately, just uh, being unaware of this fourth base here, despite having a pylon right next to it, neither player is actually aware that they're so close to each other down here on that bottom left-hand corner of the map. But uh, Goody, now with his third up and running, needs to, needs to get his eBay up again because he lost it down here inside the main base. But uh, he's going to be pushing forwards now. It looks like he's uh, re-established his armor yet again. 178 supply for Goody. He's now going to look for a second big push up the middle of the map. What is Todd going to do? Well, at this stage, he doesn't have Storm. He's got Charge and plus three to weapons. And, I don't know, no real air presence apart from the Vike, uh, from these Phoenix, but they're not going to do too much given that there are those swords out. And bam, a couple of Phoenix will get sniped out of the air by the Javelin rockets on that Thor. Very nicely done by Goody, adding in a couple of Thors here. And uh, this could be the final push for our Terran player, Todd, in a lot of trouble. He's uh, done a reasonable job at the start of the game getting some harassment out of, but unfortunately Goody going with a little bit of a, an interesting composition here. Has a few mines, the drilling claws is done. Will they get their shots off? Yes, they will. Wrecking those zealots down on the ground. The Vikings here to provide air cover. The Thors, the tanks, the Hellbats as well are all gonna do quite a lot of damage to these Immortals, despite not really having any EMPs to blanket the ground here and clear out the Immortals and Archons, he's still able to deal the damage with that heavy fire and taunt, expressing his displeasure at this game, I guess, so <laughs> just having a little bit of uh, a moment there, you could say, as uh, he is going to have to tap out there, and uh, Goody is victorious in this match on Frost LE. Really cool game there, showing a little bit of a different style from Goody. Uh, compared to what I normally see, just those three star ports really allow you a lot of flexibility. If Todd was to go air, then he can pump out the Vikings really quickly. If he wanted to keep going Banshees, then he still has triple production. So that's actually a really interesting addition there from Goody that I might have to try out myself. Hope you all enjoyed this match. I'll catch you all next time. Here. As you can see, 47 damage to bio units and then the 34 damage against other standard targets. His storms have also been wonderful, just spreading them out across the battlefield, doing really, really nicely there. And uh, for Minigun, he's been sticking with a very, a much more